We thank God. Amen. I don't know about you. I need him. Amen. To strengthen me. Amen. And you know, one of the things that's very, very important to me is our youth. And we want our youth to know truth. I know it rhymes, but it's exactly what the pastor feels. And so today, uh, we do have some handouts, and I'm going to see if I can get my deacon, Deacon James, to assist me. Amen. Thank God for him coming. Amen. We have some uh, uh, literature in, in the folder in my office. And I don't know about you, I thank God that we have the Word of God. The Word is, is our strength. The Word is our light. The Word is all that we need. Amen. In these times. Amen. And we're going to shut the gate, Brother Lethe, so that way we don't have to worry about, amen, these distractions. Amen. The big gate over there. We're going to trust God, amen, that he can do something in this atmosphere. Is that all right? Amen. We know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we may ask or think. Amen. And even though, amen, you have adversity, even though you have challenges, Amen. We stand on the solid rock of Christ. Yes. Hello. Yes. Amen. Amen. But we thank God. It's in a beige folder, Brother uh, Vic. Amen. But I'm glad. Amen. In the Lord. I'm, a, I'm especially glad in the Lord. Amen. For what he's done in my life. If you have your Bibles, look with me in Romans 15. And we're going to get everybody their uh, paperwork. Amen. And when, I, when I look at the Word of God, the Word of God is our compass. Anybody got GPS? Amen. The Word of God is the GPS. Amen. And we thank and we praise Him. Amen. Because it's through Him all blessings flow. Hallelujah. So we're going to look over in verse... 14 of Romans 15 and we're going to look from verse 14 and we'll look down to verse 21 and it says and I myself also am persuaded of you my brethren that you are also full of goodness filled with all knowledge and able also to admonish one another nevertheless brethren I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Ghost I have therefore Whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in whom those things which pertain to God. For I will dare not speak of any of those things which Christ has not did or wrought in me. To make the Gentiles obedient by the word and deed. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of God. So that from Jerusalem and round about to Ilicrium, mm, Ilicrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was spoken of, they shall see and they that have not heard shall understand. And so today we want to talk from the thoughts, He shall direct our paths. He shall direct our path. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him. And guess what? He shall direct your steps or your paths. It's so important for us to have direction in these last and evil days. It's important for us to know the ways that God wants us to go. 
It's easy to go north. It's easy to go south. It's easy to go east. It's easy to go west. But if God is directing you in a particular area or just in your life as a whole, you want him to direct your path. You want God to be leading you because if he leads you, you will not fail. And so when you think about it, God's direction is always right. And so he directs our path in a few ways. First, he directs our path to our identity, which is who we are. See, through God, he lets you know, oh man, oh woman of God, who you are. When you look down at verse 14, Paul says, and I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able also to admonish one another. I love this here because when you think about the believers in Rome, the Bible says that the, 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 the apostle was persuaded that the brethren were full of goodness. And when you think about goodness, goodness is what we would call a high moral character. This is important. You want your life to display moral character. That way when they see Sister Allen, they know, uh-uh, she ain't that kind of girl. When they see Sister LaPorsche Smith, uh-uh, Portia ain't going for that. You want to be a man and a woman of God with a high moral character. And this is what their lives display. Also, he talked about how they were filled with all knowledge. And this word knowledge actually means sound in their doctrine. And another thing that's good about this particular text, because it lets us understand in our identity, we want to be doctrinally sound. I don't care what I may preach, but most of all, when I preach it, I want to be doctrinally sound. Then he said that you will feel with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. This means to instruct. Somebody ought to say instruct. instruct. And when you think about that word instruct, it means to encourage. And every believer is responsible to encourage and to strengthen other believers with the word of God. I don't care who you are, you need encouragement in the word of God. And so we should be able to instruct, and that comes from being full of knowledge, and that means we're doctrinally sound. And so we're able to help somebody else in their time of need of encouragement. We live in a time where people are in need of encouragement. Amen. Well, the Bible says, when you look over in 2 Peter, and when you look down in chapter 3, and when you look over in verse number 18, the scripture says, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And so we're to grow in grace. You and me, we're to develop. We're to be, if you sound, you need to be more sound. This is why I say church attendance is underrated. Every time you come to church, you get built up. You get more faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I learned a long time ago that as often as I can sit my behind in God's house, I can get another brick around my fortress, another brick of strength, another brick of, the, uh, of, of peace, another brick of life, which comes from the word of God. Amen. God shall direct our path to our identity. That word identity means who we are. Some people don't know who they are. Yeah. You know, so who are you? You know, they one minute one way and another minute another way. Who are you? Yeah. And so when, when, when we're in Christ, we know he reveals us 
to uh, excuse me, who we are. I don't know about you. I, I, I you know, I want to know who I am, and I want to be that all the time. When you think about God, the Lord is God, and He changes not. Amen. God wants lonely, Amen, and then. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so we know how the Lord is because we know how his character is and his character changes not. Amen. Second thing is he directs our path to our purpose. And that means why we exist. This is the question I had to ask the Lord when I got saved. What am I here for? What, why, do, why am I alive? What, you know, why did you create me? I, he directs our path to our purpose while we exist. In verse 15 he said, Nevertheless, brother, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace of God that is given to me of God. And so Paul, who I always say is the best Christian that ever lived, he understood that it was by grace that he was who he was. Amen. And you know, you, you, you ain't nothing without the Lord. We sing that song, Lord, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. But we are nothing without the Lord. Yeah. And so, one thing about us as God's people, we neglect things that we know. And some things have to be brought back to our remembrance. Some things you might have learned when you was the little man's age right here, Brianna's son. Sometimes you got to be reminded of what you knew way back then. Uh, what is it, Dalen? When you were Dalen's age. And so you never are too big to learn. But when you think about your purpose, why you exist, when you think about the House of Prayer Evangelistic Church, this church, we exist to develop followers of Christ. Amen. That's why we exist. We exist to help Sister uh, uh, Brockman, Sister Hayes, Sister Briggs, Brother James, Brother Shockley, oh no, Stuckley. Is it Stucky? Brother Stucky. Brother Cofield. Brother Bradley. To, we, we exist to develop them as followers of Christ. We are here and we exist to make disciples. This is not a social club. We exist because we are making disciples. See, a whole lot of church don't even know what a disciple means. They don't even teach discipleship, child. They don't even know. But discipleship is in the word of God. And that's what we exist to do. Amen. See, Paul, Paul knew his purpose. And we talked a few weeks about his purpose. But when you look over in Acts 9, this is Bible study. Y'all don't mind me taking my time. Acts chapter 9. And when you look over in verse 15 of the ninth chapter, and the apostle Paul said, but the Lord said unto me, go thy way. He said, go thy way. This is what the Lord told Ananias. And we all need an Ananias. And at one point, we all become an Ananias for somebody else. Amen. But he said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him the great things that he must suffer for my name's sake. And so I love the Apostle Paul because he knew. He said, the grace of God is upon me. And without God's grace, you can't do nothing. And so it's God's grace that helps you. So Sometimes guys tell me, you know, uh, uh, about how they wasn't a good wife. I mean, a good husband, excuse me. And I say, man, by the grace of God, then I'm a good husband to my wife. By the grace of God. And so I can't say, oh, man, I'm, you know, she got the top of the line when she got Bernard Crawford. <laughs> it's but by the grace of God that I am that I am. Amen. And so you got to know that it's, it's by God's grace. And Paul said this because when you look down at verse 17 of Romans 15, he said, I therefore, I have therefore, excuse me, whereof I may glory or boast. Through Jesus Christ and the things which pertain to God. This is important. Because the only boasting that he was going to do was in what God done. 
is in what Jesus Christ has done in giving his life. He was the propitiation for our sins. And so all his boasting was in Jesus Christ. And so, you know, we know why we exist. We know why we live, why we move, why we have our being. We have it because God has made it possible. Yeah. This is important. When somebody say how good you've done, Sister Shante. When they say how good you've done, Sister Veronica. You say, you know, glory be to God. Glory be to God. You know, I never get this guy. You know, I'm just a, I'm a, I'm a true preacher. You know, and I just, I'm a student of the word of God. I love the Bible. I love the scripture. If you want to know me for anything, you ain't got to put my name when I die on 18th Street. Just let the kids walk by and say, you know, that was a Bible preaching dude right there. He was a Bible preacher. But I remember a time, Brother Pastor Bird, this dude, he preached and he laid it out. And I said, man, God used you today. That was a good word. And he looked at me and he said, give God the glory. Yeah. 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 And I said, ooh, wait. He sure told me. And so it, it helped me because I just, I learned something from that. You know what? He could have said, oh, man, you know, yeah, I feel good. He could have got all tender up and all jolly and jello inside. But he said, give God the glory. He put me in my place. You give God the glory. If you're going to boast of something, you, you got you a nice car, and your scalp is greased nice, and your hair, you know it look good, you better give God the glory. You look about to patch your hair and fall out. And somebody said, oh, you got the prettiest white teeth. You better give God the glory. You'll be around here toothless and ruthless. <laughs> better give God the glory for your teeth. A whole lot of people ain't got teeth. Y'all just say amen, somebody. All boasting is in who? Jesus. You gonna boast in anything, it's Jesus Christ. You know, I hear them guys, they say, hey, what's up, big pimpin'? I say, ain't no pimpin'. You know why I say no pimpin'? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because all pimps will have their place in the lake of fire. <laughs> you know, the world has that as a high esteem deal. The world esteem pimpin' and murder and all the, the bad, evil things that's against God in his way. You see, see, in the world, it's, it's cool for a guy to have two or three or six or seven women's. Women's. That's what the world say. You know, you're breaking hearts and, and you, you're a gigolo and you're esteem, but, but you really don't know what you're doing because you can't, you don't want to reap what you sow. You got two girls on your arm, you don't know one of them. You got two or three other guys on her own. Now, how you like me now? You ain't gonna like that, you know. I don't leave that alone, y'all. I got to wait my best. But it's true. You can dish it out, but you can't handle it when it comes back. Uh, you ready to fight, man? Right? You ready to kill? You can't eat, you can't sleep, you don't want to dance, you don't want to do nothing. You're miserable. But that's why it's good to not do folks wrong. <laughs> Scripture say, "Whosoever find a wife finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the law." Yeah. And so the Lord, uh, he, he directs our, our path to our identity. That's who we are in him. And to our purpose, why we exist. Why am I here? That's the first question I asked the Lord when I got saved over 20 some years ago. I said, Lord, why am I here? How did I get here? I didn't have no choice in the matter. And then what is my purpose here? Why do I exist? And the Lord had to show me my purpose because I didn't know. And so if you don't know your purpose, you got some praying to do, child. You got to seek why you're here. And if you're a believer, I'm going to help you with your purpose, why you exist. God gives you vision. And that's my final point. In Matthew, the 28th chapter, this right here is the vision of the believer. This is the purpose of the believer in the earth. Matthew, chapter 28, I can pretty much quote it, but, you know, 
I don't want to say it wrong. But when you look down at verse 19, it says, This is after Jesus had rose from the grave. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And so here it was, you, the Great Commission is our purpose in the earth. That's our purpose in the earth. And so when you start thinking about your vision, your vision is where you are going. Where are you going? And that's a good question of a, of a, of a, a future wife to someone that's interested in marrying her. She's going to say, boy, where are you going? If you, want me to, if you want me to be your wife, where are you going? Where are you leading? If you don't know where you're going, you ain't talking about nothing. Well, the women ought to be saying, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, but the grace of God, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. This is Paul talking. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. And so here it is again. He's talking about his vision. And we know that the Lord had blessed the Apostle Paul, and he had called him to the Gentiles. And he began to talk about how the Lord called him to the Gentiles and that he wasn't going to build up on another man's foundation, but the Lord had sent him to, I couldn't pronounce it earlier, but I think I got it now, but he had sent uh, him to Alicrium. It's, it's, it's a hard word. To, it ain't, don't y'all laugh at me because you can't do it either. Alicrium. I had it last night, but I didn't get it. But anyway, the Lord had sent him because the Lord through many signs and wonders, verse 19 of Romans 15, and by the power of the Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto our help me, Lord, I have, a, I have fully preached the gospel, yea, so I strive to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, not where somebody already had, had preached him to, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. And so God, his grace had called him for a specific task. And this is what, when you start thinking about the five-fold ministry, when you start thinking about an evangelist, an evangelist ain't trying to reach somebody that already been reached. You spread the message. I wish evangelist Crawford was here. I can testify. We'd be in, we'd be in, I'm going to say McDonald's. We go there too. But we'd be in a restaurant. And my wife will strike up a Jesus conversation. And I'm trying to get my rub on. I'm trying. I'm thinking about them biscuits and, and red lobster. I'm thinking about how I'm going to put my, my teeth in, in, the, in the pasta with the shrimp. And, ooh, Sister Breeze. But the woman of God has asked them, what do you need prayer? What do you need for me to pray when you go? All of a sudden, I got to, I got to get in the spirit. I got to get the spirit because the woman of God has stepped up. And see, that's why I tell you single women, uh-oh, here it is. You don't want a man that won't submit to the man. You don't want a man because what, where you going to have a problem at? Hello, somebody. Where you going to have a problem at? Girl, why you, you know, why you want to talk about him now? Didn't we just leave church? The Lord is truly grateful for all we've done today. But the Spirit is leading her to share the love of God with the soul. And there's been times people have started crying. Yeah. There's been times I'm like, ooh, I'm so glad I wasn't a blessing block or joy stealer, peace robber. You know, mm. I'm so glad I wasn't a hindrance yeah. to the furtherance of the gospel. Yeah. See, the gospel, if it's, if, it's, if it's irritating you, 
then something's wrong with your faith. Yeah. If it's irritating you, it's something wrong. You, God wants you to love him supremely. Yeah. When you love him supremely, you love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. You love him totally. You don't hold nothing back. God, I love you. And so, so when, when you, are you in competition with God? That's what I would have been. If I'm going to get in the way of her telling somebody about, I want her to love him. It's a bad thing to be married to a woman who won't love God. I'm over there, but I'm over here now. It's a hard thing to be in love with a woman who don't want nothing to do with Jesus. Oh my Lord, you're talking about a bang bang and a wang wang. You're talking about a headache and a heartache. All right. How is she going? How is she going to reverence you yeah. if she don't reverence God? It's not going to work. Amen. And so I tell the men of God, Xavier and and David, stuck I I warn them. I say, hey, and and brother Khalil over there. I warn them that you know. It's some women who will tear down their home and destroy it with their mouth. Yeah. I'm in the water, I might as well swim. Yeah. They will destroy their home with their lips. Right. Oh, yeah. And a woman is supposed to be tender. She's supposed to be a nurturer. Yeah. She's supposed to be an encouragement. Yeah. She's a helpmate. There's some women that get married that don't want to be no helpmate. They want to be in, they want a checkmate. Yeah. Do you know that people in marriage, some people in marriage play chess? Yeah. Well, let me, let me, let me manipulate him this way and her, you know, let me do my magic on him. That's some foolishness. Don't nobody want a man, they want a woman. And if you get if you get yourself callous over the years, a woman can become a man. Hard. Wanting to be the leader. That's what I mean, a man. Wanting to be the leader. Still got a wound, but wants to be the man. Everybody have a place. Everybody has an assignment by the Lord. It's enough to do that. And so this is an encouragement for us all to stay in our lane. If you're a husband, love her like Jesus loved the church. If you're a wife, respect them like the church respects Jesus. Stay in your lane. And so the scripture tells us that we need a vision. And our vision is to, to, to spread the message, is to let our light shine that men may see our good works that our Heavenly Father would be glorified. We have a commission that we are to go ye therefore, and also that we are to start in our home, that we teach our children the fear and the admonition of the Lord. And so this is, we have a, a vision, we have sight to where we're going. And you gotta stick with your vision. Look over at Romans 12. I got another scripture, but this is a good one here. We're going to look at Romans 12. I want you to look down with me in verse 9 and 10. And it says, let love be without this, this simulation. Thank you. This simulation or with hypocrisy. Because sometimes when you have uh, uh, untrue love, that's what this simulation is. He said, arbor or reject that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Now here's the key. This is our vision. Be kindly affected, affection, kindly affection, one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. And so our vision, A, is to bless our community, our nation, and our world. As God's people, we bless our community, our nation, and our world. 
everywhere we go, if you're in the Bahamas, I know COVID-19 is here, but if you're in the Bahamas, you still represent God in the Bahamas. Not just once you deport. See, I've been over there, so I can talk about it. Not once you deport, but even on the cruise ship. Yeah. So you're not on the casino, you're not drinking, you're not, oh, they can't see me at the church. You're not drinking, you're, you, you are to bless our community, the nation that we live in, America, and the world, wherever you are. Yeah. This is our vision. Yeah. Wherever you are, it's God. When, when I'm here, when I'm there, it's God. If I'm in the middle of the, the cha-cha slide, to the left, to the right, it's God. Yeah. No matter where it is, I'm representing Him. I'm living, like Elder Bird would say, on a Sunday. Amen. And so we have our vision. Our vision you know, God, he's going to direct our path. He's given us vision. He's given us identity. He's given us purpose. Yeah. I, I wrote down the, the acronym of BLESS. B-L-E-S-S. -S. You can write it down. BLESS means we benefit our community. I'm a benefit to my community. I'm a benefit. Because when I'm driving and when people do crazy stuff, and they do... You know, if they trying to get out and you trying to let them out, they're like, come on, come on. I'm like, hey, I'm letting you out. Have y'all ever had that happen? Yeah. Was somebody acting crazy as a driver? Yeah. You know, we got maniacs that, that drive cars in America. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not giving them the finger. I'm not getting in the road rage with them because I'm a benefit to my community. Then I'm the love. You see, the scripture talks about let love be without dissimulation or without being true. It's real love. It's not flattery. Yeah, I love you, but then I'm stabbing you in the back. And so the, the L is I love. The B is I benefit. The L is I love. Yeah. You know, I walk in love. The scripture says be followers of dear children, uh, imitators of, of Christ as a, a child, and then walk in love as Christ has also loved us and gave himself for us. A sweet smell in the room. And so I love. And you know, sometimes I have to be reduced to love. Because love is warfare. Amen. It's a challenge to love. Sometimes it's hard to love. But it's commanded to love. Yeah. It's not optional. The E is, the blessed, the E in blessed is encourage. And it's my job to encourage. Even when it's not easy. Sometimes encouragement is saying, no, I'm not doing that for you. Do you know people do not like to hear no? You know, some people are narcissists. What do you mean no? Why not? Why are you asking? Why are you questioning my no? I said no. Exactly. Only a child doesn't want to hear no. You, you ever see a child when you tell them no? They, they, you know, they have a meltdown. You're a grown woman. Why are you doing that? Why, why are you doing that as a grown man? And so sometimes no is a good thing. Yeah. Sometimes no is a seasonal thing. Yeah. God even says no. But when we, but, 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 but you can tell, you know, if we have a narcissist mentality by someone no to our, to, to, to our request. And so we encourage. Encouragement also is... Oh, uh, uh, it's not optional when somebody have done us wrong. Amen. Sometimes when people have done us wrong, the last thing we want to do is encourage them when they're in a low state. Right. We want to whoop them. God, you feel them, God. God don't like ugly. He ain't too fond of cute. That's what, you know what? Yeah, you reap what you sow. A lot of times we right there, we, we, uh, we try to get a lick into it's like somebody getting beat up, and we just slide the feet on that. And it felt good then until they rolled the tape back, and now you got charges. All right. That's when it, that's when it don't feel good. Oh, Wasn't that a cheese flare hunt? It didn't feel good, did it? And so this is something that is important. We, we're, we're, we're to bless. The B is the benefit. The L is the love. The E is the encourage. The S is the serve. Yeah. One scripture is in Acts chapter 10. Verse number 38. 
And it says how God, this is Peter, he said how God has anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him and we are witnesses of all things which he did. And so this is an important scripture because what Jesus done is what we should do. See, one of the problems we have is many somebody ain't talking like we want them to talk, acting like we want them to act, looking like we want them to look. We like, you know, I don't want to fool me. And so Jesus went about healing people. And so we should go serving. We should go. When somebody's sick in the nursing home, we should go pray for them. When somebody's locked up, we should send them a letter. Thank you for that. And so we serve. God didn't save us to sit. That's one of the things I told our newest member who's here today. God bless you, Sister Stephanie. God didn't save you to sit. You've been called to serve. You to serve the Lord, not with sadness, but with what? Gladness. Yeah. You should be glad. Like Paul, he said, I thank God for counting me worthy to be in the ministry. And so we should be thankful that we're serving the Lord. I count it a privilege to serve the Lord. When I, when I gospel rap, and I ain't wrote, wrote one in years, and I have remembered the ones that I wrote. But when I go somewhere and, and rap, you know, I'm loving God. I'm, I'm serving Him. You know, well, I used to be talking about how, you know, how I'm this, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, I'm this. Now I'm able to say he's this, he's that, he's that, he's this. Yeah. And so I'm worldwide speaking the truth, talking about Jesus Christ, the acts laid the root, all these different things, because I'm serving God. Yeah. You know, when, when I'm wherever I'm at, I'm serving God. And that's the, the mind we must have. We serve. The second S in blessed is we share. What do we share? We share our hope. We share our Savior. The one who died for us, who suffered for us, for us, who's kept us these many years we've been saved. What has God done for you? We share. When somebody going through a similar trial, you know I had that trial. You going through something with your child, sometimes you go through something for your child, not for you, but for somebody else. You know, it's a shame when somebody know God kept them and delivered them and sustained them through the trials of their children and they won't even say they're going through nothing or they went through something or they came out of that. It's a crying shame. And so you should want to share. You should want to share. You should want to become transparent. You know, and tell people about, hey, listen, you know, I was the biggest liar in this city. You know, I was the biggest, I was a thief. I stole. I did this, I did that. You know, but God broke me from that. God delivered me from that. God gave me a new desire. He took away those evil desires and gave me spiritual desire. Now I like to pray. Now I like to fast. Now I like to go to church. Now I like to sing songs. Now I like to testify. Now I like to worship. Now I like to give. And so these are things that you testify. I used to tell people about giving since I brought it up. I used to go to uh, Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. And man, I got tired of seeing the preacher in a new Lincoln. He kept a Lincoln. And, and man, I'm just going to tell you. I said I'm going to put this, di this, this $10 in church, but I ain't putting no tithes in there. And so I was tipping God, tipping God, tipping God all them years because I felt like the preacher was a crook. I thought, and guess what? Got called to be a preacher. Some people think they think of being a crook. But all they got to do is hang with me. They'll see how crooked I really am. Right. Right. Just spend a little time with me. I'll show you the crooked me. I'm crooked right up to Jesus. Amen. And so this is important. These are, these are my testimonies because guess what? I refuse to rob God. I'm bringing my tithes in here. I'm making sure when we was on COVID-19 and wasn't working, I still was in line to tithe. Amen. And, and I wasn't embarrassed because it went from hundreds to fifties. Right. But I was thankful for what I did. Amen. See, you can't have pride and be saved. You can't be rebellious and glorify God. You better humble yourself, Jack. Because yeah. the one who humbles himself, God will exalt you. Amen. 
We're to bless our community, our nation, and the world in which we live. Amen. We're to benefit. We're to love. We're to encourage. We're to serve. We're to share. And this begins with prayer. We have to ask the Lord, Lord, direct me. You don't want to be led to do things that are wrong. You want, a God, want God to be in charge of your decision making. Amen. See, it begins with prayer. And the last thing is, we're, we've been, our vision is to lead the next generation to know, love, and follow Jesus. I heard him once say how a man, every time, you know, he was a police officer. Every time you see another man, he size him up to see if he can take him. That's foolishness, you know that? Yeah. But when I see the Isaac the Blues, the Davids, when I see this young man here, I want them to flourish. I want them to sound their voice like a trumpet. I want the world to live, to lift up his voice and declare that Jesus saved me. He brought me from Islam. He kept me these years. God, I want them to stand and declare the goodness of the Lord. That's our call, is to lead the next generation to know, love, and follow Jesus. Amen. I got to say this. He will direct our steps. Yes, he will. It's our job to go and to create an atmosphere in our hearts for him to lead us. It's a whole lot of different noises. But we want to hear crystal clear from God in which way for him to lead us. I'm a living witness. It used to be a time when I start my, my the message to give to the church. I, I used to start on Wednesday. By Wednesday, I, I've been praying, praying, praying. By Wednesday, it, 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 it comes to me. And it's hard to hear from God sometimes. Especially when you have a, a pretty busy life. Amen. And I'm going to say this. The Lord starts speaking to me the minute I'm done on Sunday. So much where the Sunday to Sunday or the Sunday to Tuesday, the word is just flowing. He's just giving them to me over and over again. And one of the things that I find myself doing, running to get a piece of paper to write it down so I don't forget it. That's, a, that's the grace of God. Because sometimes, boy, you'll be like, man, I ain't got a word yet. Oh, Lord. You know, sure, I can conquer up a word and put a little old something out of the refrigerator and put a little bit of put that old hot dog on there. Maybe it won't taste as bad if you put it in the oven. <laughs> right. Nobody want no old re-warmed up hot dog message. Amen. Somebody wants some real fresh food, some fresh fish, some fresh greens. You don't want no cooked over re-warmed up greens. You don't want no cornbread. You want your cornbread fluffy and yellow. What butter dripping off of? And you put it up against that them green, and you have you just an old good old time. Amen. And so you want a fresh word from him. And so God will grant us the grace. All we gotta do is let him do it, and he'll direct our path. Amen. May God bless you and keep you as my prayer. Be blessed.